Hey everyone, it's been an adventure in the last like 15 minutes or so, getting this glorious poster board set up and having my camera really far away from me now. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll look a little better doing these records and it won't be right up in my face. Also, I can gesture now and it actually will make sense as to what I'm doing. Um, today's Grim Dawn video is going to be a Spellbreaker, and unlike my other Spellbreaker, this one's going to be in melee. So, let's just jump right in. The concept here is to dual wield while using Cold and Aether, because someone requested those two damage types together. So what we're going to be doing is using a, a big Cold attack and a big Aether attack with a couple proc abilities on our gear... Mixed with, you know, movement and the things that are provided by the Nightblade and Arcanus classes. So first and foremost, I believe I have Lethal Gambit completely maxed out. Um, it's 16 out of 16, and I think I have a plus one from a Hallowed Ground or something that jumps it up to 17. And this is our big cold attack. We have four points <laughs> in Dual Blades. Because this gives us raw cold damage. Um, I threw a point in Amaresta's Blade Burst because of the chance to freeze. We have one point in Shadow Strike because it's a great movement ability. We've maxed out Pneumatic Burst. And put one point into Breath of Blogothian and Shadow Dance. One point in the Veil of Shadow. But we've maxed out Night's Chill. Because that drops the enemy cold resistance a lot. And, you know, Pierce Resist dropping is pretty good for us. I Though I don't know how much Pierce, resist, pierce damage we're actually dealing out. Um, so, uh, yeah, that... But getting enemy Cold Resist down is great for this. <laughs> On the Arcana side of things, we're going really deep in the class because we want to get fag Fabric of Reality maxed out. This will give us 100% Aether damage which is great for building up Kalidor's Tempest, but also the Aether damage that's going to happen with our base attack. I put... I think it's one, two, three... I think I put four points in Iskandra's, because I had four points laying around and I couldn't think of any place to put them. Oh, I think I should put one point in Conversion. Um, I'll do that before I get to the main the main show. Um, I think I'm just going to do Steps of Tournament again, but I'll, I'll put a point in there before I go to Steps. Um, Overload and... Elemental Balance, we have one point each, but I think I have a plus one from an item that gives that to four. Uh, Mirror Varoctes is at one. We have Myven Sphere at ten, but because we have plus two to all Arcana skills, it jumps it up to twelve. One point in Kalidor's Tempest and Inferno, and we're using the Wrath of Agravex because this just makes Kalidor's Tempest, even as a one-pointer, a big bomb. One point in Electra's Flash Freeze at absolute zero because it's a great defensive ability. Um, it helps fuel Kalidor's Tempest a little bit, even though we're not huge on fire damage. Um, and it also drops physical resistance, which is nice, too. One point in Arcane Will, because it's a great one-point wonder ability. Um, Inner Focus is maxed out for that percent spirit, percent offensive ability. And, that, and like I mentioned before, Fabric of Reality is also maxed out. So, for gearing, on... On the right, we have Immaterial Edge for its plus one to all Arcana skills and its base physical damage combined with base Aether damage. Our other weapon is a Chill Blaze, and I may switch to a Cold Stone or another caster style weapon for this part, this weapon. But uh, we're going to go with the Chill Blaze for now. It's a Cold Damage um, one-hander. It's physical damage based, and that's why I'd maybe switch to something that's Cold Damage based. But that's something maybe for the future to try out. Um, Bane of Neuron Sin gives us a great cold damage shot. And um, actually, if you're using a Trojan Sky Shard build, this is a great amulet to use too. Because even though it doesn't give percent lightning damage, its ability is cold lightning. Which is a nice like pop to uh, that, that, that meshes well with your damage types for a Trojan's build. I have an Aether Lord Signet on one hand, mostly for the Arcane Blast ability. But it is like an a, a good aether, aether ring, just for and just a good ring in general for what it provides you. And my other ring is a chill surge ring for the flash freeze proc. 
for the other big proc we have is the cold flash from some adept greaves in this case they're seraphim adept greaves it's a little tricky to say and then we're rounding out our gear we have um an arcanist rangers badge this just gives us aether and elemental damage i'd probably want to switch this out for a uh, field medics mark i think it would be high on my list for swap outs and then we have court of the ancestor shade leather leggings and silk touch hand wraps and this is all where our, our sort of core of cold damage comes in mantle with weeping eye has plus plus two to escondras and it has the aether damage worked in perfect for us and right now i'm going to be running death's vestments and that's visage because they're cool looking they also have cold damage but yeah, I wanted to have I wanted to have you know the at least get a little mileage out of some death gear, and that could easily be swapped out. And I probably will swap it out mostly for stuff with more defense, because <laughs> the title of this video is probably going to be something about this being a test build. Because I really would like to um, perfect some of the gear on here. Specifically for defenses, because he doesn't have some—he doesn't have great resistances right now, and his his armor's really low, and he has not great defensive ability. But um, his his hit points seem really low, really really low to me. But um, yeah, we're gonna be working on that with this guy, or at least put, have the potential to work on that a little bit with this guy in the future. Specifically, switching out these two pieces for maybe some heavier armor that ha that still provides. You know cold benefits so um we're gonna jump into steps of torment after i do that one point swap. Um, so correction it is cold snap not cold stone and i may uh i may do a quick swap to it in the middle of all this we'll see so like i mentioned before our big hits are gonna be Calidor's Tempest, and then... Owie. So this is why I said this is a test build. Because we're going to take a lot of damage going through this. Mostly from ranged attacks. It seems like... It seems like we can handle ourselves in melee more. But, um, it's going to be... It's going to be the guys far away that are going to do us more problems. We're also going to take advantage of the haunt ability for. Oh, I forgot to point out I'm using the haunt relic. Um, the haunt relic is uh, pretty much our our go-to for this because it's it's aether, it's elemental, its ability is aether cold, so we actually get to use it. Right, there he is, bang. We got a hero behind us. So, <laughs> yeah, this build, unlike my my battle mage, is actually really good at single target. It's mostly it's mostly because of this combined with all the other things, the bane of Nira, Zim, or whatever. Bane bane of Nuram Sin. Neuram Sin.
So there are a few other options I would consider with this build, um, gear-wise. The Soul Thief would probably be a really nice, a really nice weapon here. Potentially a weapon worth dual wielding with. Because we're using Kalidor's Tempest, and the Soul Thief would give us a, a fairly sizable bonus to Kalidor's Temp Kalidor's Tempest. Kal 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 Tempest. Not to mention being Aether damage. But the thing is, we're we're kind of trying to gear both Cold and Aether. I do have a bunch of Soul Thieves floating around, and I should probably go grab them just to... There's a, there's a block there. Just to try it. But yeah, um, doubling up on the Soul Thieves would probably be a good option here. But between our three bursts, we can definitely take out we can definitely take out groups of enemies pretty quickly. As long as they're sort of lined up correctly. And this is Haunt. Haunt does a lot of damage with this with this setup. The thing about Haunt is it's a dot, and Haunt you can also sort of spam it, so you can actually get a whole room affected by it very quickly. Ooh, chains. Gotta love Chains of Valeran showing up. Yeah, I only wish this guy were or tankier is the only thing. Then again, I may just be spoiled by that other build at this point. <laughs> because I, I really did I really do like my battle mage. Getting squirrel, getting squirrely with our uh, our pneumatic burst there, because it does give us a very notable speed boost, which is one of the main reasons to use it. I just haunted some ghosts. Hey, get out of here! block my way so I'm gonna point something out uh, on the camera right now and maybe that may be questioning like there's a white thing at the bottom of the bottom of the view that's my microphone <laughs> and then right to my left you'll see something that is like a kill this guy um, Right about there. Those are actually some Wii U game cases that I have sitting on a table next to me. And then that is my microphone. I don't have everything perfectly hidden, but I'm doing okay with this setup. It's just a pain in the ass to put up. I mean, he did okay taking a couple hits right there, but I do kind of wish he could do a little more. Like, I wasn't so panicked about, oh, crap, I got hit twice, and now I'm dying. Like, this is that's probably going to be this fight. A lot of this fight's probably going to be, oh, crap, I got hit twice, and now I'm dying.
I mean, I'd say he's actually doing pretty good, though. <laughs> I mean, all things considered. I don't think he has a skeleton key, unfortunately. So he can't continue deeper. But yeah, that uh, that finishes off this mostly concepty build for doing Aether and Cold together. Uh, I don't think there's anything more to say. You kind of gotta come, like, gotta play off the uh, the sort of like bombs that go on cooldown nature of Kalidor's Tempest and Lethal Gambit, but you do end up with a really, really solid core for a build that could potentially be taken to to crazy plates places later on. Speaking of the future, I would absolutely try to get to Merciless Repertoire. Um, and get Ring of Steel with Ring of Frost worked into the build. Because even though this is smaller than Electra's Flash Freeze, it's another AoE you can work in. That's sort of a big bomb AoE. And then, uh... Yeah, and then obviously I'd throw a point... And maybe, maybe increase fully um, Elemental Awakening because you can get that burst every time you hit your Pneumatic Burst for lots and lots and lots of Elemental Damage and Frostburn Damage. Which is surprisingly, the burns are surprisingly effective if you have a lot of it. Um, it's just not as showy or flashy as just blasting something with a, with a huge just explosion of something. Um, but the burns do work pretty well. Um, if you have a lot of them. So, uh, that, that covers the build. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.